Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, before we get to today's puzzle, I'm just going to address the huge controversy about yesterday's. I'm joking, but um, it was pointed out that um, the removal of one of the cages by our tester had corrupted the theme here. So I'm just going to explain that. What I what I hadn't noticed any more than the tester had was that there are a number of the, the cages in this puzzle um, could be seen to be kind of spelling out CTC for cracking the cryptic. So across the top, for instance, the cages were like that. And you can see that CTC. Now in the middle, you've got that and that. And the cage that the tester took out was this one, which was a kind of T-shape. Now he said, it turned out not to be necessary for the solve, which was pretty easy anyway. And I think his point was that um, with that cage in, this puzzle might have been considered just too easy for a video at all. But I do acknowledge that we've slightly corrupted um, Swaroop Gugulam's uh, theme there by taking that out. So I apologize. Somebody also pointed out, as well as the sort of CTC here with an upside down T, just as that's up back to front C, there's also a diagonal CTC, effectively, or probably two of them in the puzzle. So, you know, it was going on there. That 25 cage was clearly there just to kind of achieve that in the puzzle. And I mean, I think there's a fair point that we are more interested in the solver's experience than the setters, but nonetheless, there are a lot of nuances to testing. We'll bear this sort of thing in mind. In future, I do want to say that it was not Swaroop who's written to us at all. Um, it was other people partly on the Discord server and some by email to us who've pointed this out. So what I'm doing is providing under the link to today's puzzle, um, I'll provide the link to Swaroop's original puzzle and you can solve it in the form he sent it, if you wish. Now, today's puzzle is from Wessel Strijkstra of the Netherlands. It's his first compilation, and uh, like many constructors, he's been inspired by us to set a puzzle. And this is using two of the themes that crop up regularly on the channel. One is Magic Squares, and the other is Thermo Sudoku, uh, which obviously leads me to advertise our Thermo Sudoku app, which is so unbelievably popular. I don't think it's had a review it's had, you know, about 90% of its reviews are five-star ones with the occasional four-star one thrown in. It's a very popular app and we're quite proud of it. So do, do look it up. Uh, there's a link below the video again. Now, this puzzle, as I say, Thermo and Magic. So Thermos, as usual, on the thermometers, starting from the bulb, the numbers must increase as you go to the end of a thermometer. Now, if you look closely in these cells, you'll see that thermometers end there, but they don't actually mix. Um, the other rule is the magic square, and the blue cells form a magic square in the layout given. That's it. So. Um, I'm a bit astonished, actually, that Wessel has managed this with just those constraints, those thermos, and two given digits. It seems... that seems amazing to me, but we'll see how it unfolds. Um, I am going to have a go now. Do try the puzzle on the first link below the video, um, and see how you do before watching my solve, if you want. So, let's get cracking. Um, I normally like to start with the longest thermometer. But I think here we start with the magic square. We can always put a five in the middle. And if we remember our magic square theory, the numbers orthogonally connected to the five, which in this case are these highlighted cells, are odd with one opposite nine and three opposite seven. Ah, oh, yes, okay. Obviously the ones on the ends of the thermometers must be nine and seven. And the ones on the bulbs of the thermometers must be one and three. Um, now, that means the numbers on the corners are two, four, six, and eight, the even numbers. Yeah, so the ones on the end of the thermometer again can't be two or four because these thermometers are all five cells long. So they must be six and eight on the ends. 
These at the beginnings must be two and four. Um, oh, what have I done wrong there? I thought I had that highlighted. Two and four there. So what's that telling us about these thermometers? This one or three begins both of these. Um, this one looks a bit more constrained than this one. Yeah, I don't know necessarily what we'll... Okay, we've got a 6-8 pair, obviously, in the first column. So if this was a 3, yeah, this couldn't be 6 here. It would... Oh, no, of course, we've got a 6-8 pair, and this is a magic square. So the side of it adds up to 15. 6 plus 8 is 14, plus that one is 15. The three rows of a magic square, as well as its diagonals, always add up to 15, because that's a third of 45, which is the sum of the numbers in the magic square, 1 to 9. So we get the 1 there. That's opposite a 9, because of the 15 addition rule. Um, so one of the, oh, so this one's seven, yeah, that's three. God, this is simpler than I'm making it seem, I think, uh, to at least resolve these magic square positions. Yes, this can't be four now and get to the seven. Five, six wouldn't be enough. So that's the two, that's the four. Uh, let's do the magic square maths, nine, that must be the six, and that's the eight. So that's the magic square sorted. So now the rest is Thermo Sudoku. Ah, look, three to the eight here, and four's already gone in the row, so we can just fill them in. I think we can do the same up here. There's a certain, there's a great degree of symmetry about this. So six has gone in the row. We put in three, four, five there. Um, it's not so clear cut in the columns, but that's leaving us one, eight, and nine in the top row. That one can't be eight because of the given. Same applies here, very symmetrically. Two comes out of that. Now, here we've got two or three, three or four, four or five. Ah, seven in the column. Can't be here because of the seven in that box, so it's got to be there. Excellent. Let's see. We must, I bet we're going to be able to do something very similar here. Six or five or six there, six or seven. This has to be eight because of the seven we just placed. No, that wasn't quite, maybe I've not quite understood the symmetry or maybe it doesn't apply fully. Um, yeah, I don't think I can finish that off yet. Eight, seven, one. So we've got a nine somewhere here. One and three must be up there. Ah, oh, three, that's the symmetrical number. So three there. Three must be here. It can't be on the thermo because of the three here. And then three here. Okay. So these are from one, five, and six, but I don't actually know which way. One of them's a one. No. Well, they're from one, five, six, and seven. Get it right. Right. Two. Two is in one of these two cells. Seven, five, two, eight, no, I can't see how to finish this off. Eight, seven, six, four there. Okay, let's just fill in the numbers along the thermos. Two, three, or four. Yeah, three, four, or five, four, five, or six on the way up to the seven. And from here, three up to the nine. Ah, this can't be eight or seven now. Right, so that one is six. And that lets us fill in the whole of that thermo. This one can't be a five because of the five in its box. This forms a three, four, five triple up here. Ah, look, that three, sorry. Okay, just ordinary Sudoku is doing a lot of work there. So that four means this is a five and that's a six. So all the thermos done, yes, that five has resolved that one. I think all, and that, and that five has resolved this one. All the thermos now are done. So the rest is now just classic Sudoku. So we've got nine and five down here and a five in row seven already. 
to sort that one out. I do like how this comes together. It's very neat how it all feeds in. Three, four there. One and two, four, three, six, eight must be there. This is a seven, nine pair. And the seven up there is resolved which way around they are. That nine fixes this one. Lovely. That one puts one up here. Two and six, we can do them because of the one of the two givens. This two and nine hasn't been resolved, or this one and two. Right, let's have a look at box four. Yes, five goes in there because of that five and that one. And they put a five over here. Four there must put a four here. We've got a one, two, seven triple, which at least resolves the nine, two pair at the bottom. Eight and six. This is now not six or seven, so that's a one five pair. Yes, that's been resolved by the five on the thermo. Seven and nine there. Six to eight in this box has to be here, given that eight and that eight. Seven, five, four is there. That's one, it's a naked single now. That makes this nine, and the box finishes with a three there. Now, over here, that's a one eight pair. Still can't resolve that. Seven, though, must go there. Two there and nine. So that resolves this seven nine domino. Now, two one seven four five six is the missing number from those six cells. Three eight nine is another triple over there. And that's resolving the last pair of unresolved cells in the top and bottom boxes. Right, six and four up the middle. Five, three, two, six, four, one, nine, and an eight, seven pair. One, two, three here, so one there and a two, three pair. And then we can take that into the triples. One and two in this row, so seven, two, one. This one at the bottom, nine and eight already in the row. Three, eight, and nine. And the three is resolved two and three. That's a lovely puzzle. I mean, that really works neatly. I think we're going to be seeing all kinds of symmetry in this finished grid. Let's just check that it says I've got it right as far as it knows. But remember, the check function isn't checking the magic square constraint or the thermos, but I think they all look good too. Um, I presume that we're looking here at an arrangement in which each cell is symmetrically 10 minus its counterpart. It does look like that to me. But it's a very neat construction using just these very few thermos and the magic square constraint. Really clever to have got that done. Um, not a very difficult solve, um, in my opinion. But of course, these things are relative. The controversy you might have thought I was going to address about yesterday's puzzle was my having called it a nice, easy-ish puzzle. And then, of course, some solvers took an hour to get it done. I mean, that's perfectly normal. Some people find some puzzles easier than others. The Any gradings we suggest are all relative anyway. So, you know, don't feel either bad or please don't feel I'm patronizing anybody. I'm not trying to do that at all. Um, I'm just trying to bring you puzzles that are fun to solve. And I think both yesterday's and this one are nice puzzles. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Thanks very much to uh, Wessel for sending it and uh, certainly want to encourage him in setting puzzles. That That's a really great start. And uh, thanks very much for all your kind comments on all the videos. It's really appreciated. It's, it's a fabulous community. Um, we certainly welcome the, the chat on the Discord server as well. Um, some very valid points do get made there and, and we do pay attention. So thanks very much. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.